What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Lucas and in this one I'm going to be talking about how healing works. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe because it helps my channel to grow and I greatly appreciate that. I want you to listen very carefully to what I say in this video because at times it's going to be rather easy to misinterpret what I'm saying. So this video is going to be all about psychological, psychological healing. And before I even begin, I want to say that I'm not a therapist. So if you really need help, uh, you should get some, you know, go to a trained professional. But I'm going to be pointing out a lot of the traps with healing because it's kind of a culture at this point, this whole like inner healing <laughs> type thing. I'm, I'm sure if you're watching this video, you've probably seen or heard of stuff like this. So this video is going to be about uh, what I call the trap of healing, uh, how to <laughs> let your emotions basically heal themselves. And how can you tell if you're acting out of repressed emotions? So I'm going to have in the pinned comment below all my notes that I'm going to, I'm going to be using for this video. Uh, so I recommend taking a look at them. You can follow along if you want. Um, you can read them if you want. But you'll basically know uh, the topics and the sort of general direction of where I'm going to be going in this video. So my first point is people chase healing for years and years and fail to truly make changes at a fundamental level. Now we've all like seeing stuff like this. If you can do a quick Google search of people who, you know, they're healing and <laughs> it's just so many years and years of, of just healing. I uh, heard a story. Uh, I was told by this girl, her YouTube name is Nargis Non-Duality. And I think she was at some kind of ceremony in South America. Uh, but I know she was at some, some ceremony and there was people there who have been going for over a decade and the whole point of it was healing and she she saw that and she said that she thought to herself i i don't want to do this for a decade <laughs> you know like why would you want to just continuously come back to this over and over and over again decade over decade and very clearly from that specific uh, example, you can see that human beings aren't very, they're not very efficient at healing, uh, psychologically speaking. They typically don't really understand what to do. And that's because psychological healing is a very counterintuitive thing. Psychological healing is not some sort of one, two, three step formula. It's uh, very non-linear. And really, psychological healing isn't actually ever going to work unless you are becoming conscious of how you're creating your problems and your emotional issues on a moment to moment basis. So people chase healing for years and years and years and they don't see results at a fundamental level. They just need more healing and more healing and more healing. And this is basically a large part of what I call the trap of healing. Because if you're doing something for years and years and years, I'm sure a lot of those people will see some improvements in their life. It'll change their perspective. But if you're continuously trying to heal yourself for years and years, there's something wrong. There's something, the process or the specific um, method, it doesn't work properly. Imagine if your car broke down and you continuously had to fix it year after year after year after year. Now, clearly, this car, there's, there's something wrong with it that you're not seeing. If it's continuously breaking down, maybe you got to get a new engine. Maybe there's other parts that are too old. Maybe you got to scrap the entire thing. You got to just get a whole new car. Got to get a whole new method of transportation. So if there's just 
a sort of endless loop of just healing. I gotta heal myself more. Uh, this is basically a trap. And it's just gonna waste a lot of your time. Now moving on, I'm gonna talk a tiny bit about traditional forms of healing. So there is value in traditional forms of healing. Uh, basically what I mean by that is therapy, counseling, and other ways that people heal. Most of our psychological issues are something we create on an ongoing basis. If we never actually become conscious of how we create them, then what healing is gonna happen? So you can go to therapy or ceremonies or whatever. You can do uh, specific practices and all sorts of methods for psychological healing. But if you don't have the actual intention of how am I creating this? How is this something that I'm actually creating, not in some philosophical way, but in a very direct way, in a very, very uh, direct way that just relates to our immediate experience? Because it's something that we create on a moment to moment basis. 99% of our psychological suffering is something that we are creating on a moment to moment basis. And the thing about a lot of traditional forms of healing, so counseling, therapy, talking to people, stuff like this, this can make you feel better just to even talk about it and get it out there. It can, it can make you feel better, but you're not making changes usually at a very fundamental level. You're sort of just replacing uh, one emotion for another. You're sort of rearranging a house of cards almost. You're not actually realizing how the hell this whole thing even gets constructed in the first place. And if you don't realize that, you're just going to be stuck basically, you know, rearranging the deck on the Titanic. It doesn't matter what the hell you do to that deck, it's screwed. <laughs> it's, it's going under. So what you actually want to learn, or not even learn, just be aware of, which can take a, a long time. This isn't uh, some sort of one, one, two, three step process. You're done. Okay, now let's go to the movies. Uh, it's something you're going to have to return to over and over again. But really, if you don't create the intention to realize how you are creating uh, basically all, all of your psychological problems, uh, nothing's actually really going to get solved. And what I mean by psychological problems in this context is like, you know, the sort of common ones like depression or anxiety, things like that. And really, if you have depression, uh, see that this is a, a complicated topic because there's so many uh, particular people who can be watching this who would need very different forms of, you know, treatment because people are very different. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what form of treatment uh, you get, whether you're using ketamine for depression, apparently that's working, or you're going to therapy, or you know you wanna go outside and get some sunlight. If you're not becoming conscious of how you're creating this, there's nothing actually happening. You're just sort of pushing emotions away and pulling at other emotions, and there's no fundamental change happening that's actually going to restructure your mind and consciousness so that it doesn't create this anymore. And basically all my videos are geared towards uh, how to stop really constructing so much goddamn suffering in your life. And I'm going to be talking more about that by the end of this video. But uh, yeah, moving on. There is tremendous value in traditional forms of healing and unconventional forms of healing. I am not pushing these methods away at all. I am merely stating that without becoming conscious of how we create suffering, we will ultimately get nowhere and continuously create new problems. So this is what I was talking about when I said don't misinterpret uh, what I'm going to be saying in this video. There's nothing wrong with going to therapy if you need it. Or, you know, if you're really depressed, uh, whatever. I heard, you know, there's clinical form, uh, I don't know, people use... Ketamine in clinical settings, I heard that's doing well. Other forms of, you know, uh, mind-altering drugs too. You know, I heard, you know, psilocybin, for example, I heard that's really good for depression as well. That's what a lot of our research is coming out and saying, and they're relatively safe too. They're not going to cause extreme amounts of damage to you, or, you know, you're, 
you want to talk to someone or you want to go for a walk, you know, to feel better. There's nothing wrong with any of that. But if you aren't aware of how you construct it and you don't have the intention to become aware of that and you're not sort of doing something about it actively, you're not putting effort towards that, nothing's going to change. You're just going to find yourself in that loop still because your mind is creating uh, all of these sort of psychological tendencies that we have to be anxious and fearful and depressed because these really help us to stay alive. When you're anxious, you know, this helps to keep you in, in your safe zone, for example, in your comfort zone. A lot of our behavior, uh, basically 99% of it, if not 100%, is geared towards keeping us alive. And a lot of <laughs> a lot of sort of conventional human behavior it's basically stuck within just getting our survival needs met so when you're in this sort of perception of the world that has to do with just surviving there's always going to have there's always going to be a byproduct of a sense of lack or frustration or anger or depression or anxiety because you're constantly fighting the world. You're constantly in this sort of loop of getting more, we don't have enough, because that's kind of what uh, being in that sort of level of consciousness implies, is that it's basically you versus the world. It's a doggy dog world out there, and you gotta get you know, your food to survive. You gotta get your money, uh, you gotta get the sex you need, and there's nothing wrong with that. The only problem is when we're stuck in these needs and we have no way, uh, no conscious way to transcend them. When we're basically stuck in this goddamn loop of being anxious, being physically tense, being depressed, being frustrated, being angry. And this is where we have to be very honest with ourselves. We have to be very, very fucking honest with how we actually feel. People will say, well, I'm okay, Lucas. What, what are you talking about? And I mean, hey, man, if you say you're fine, you're fine. That's cool. But the thing is, is when, when you're stuck in the same few states for the most part, you have no ability to reference other states because you haven't seen them. For example, if you've ate nothing but cheesecake for the last week versus a person who's ate nothing but high quality foods for their body for the last week, that person who ate the cheesecake is going to be very stuck in that cheesecake state. Whereas the person who has ate the vegetables is going to be, you know, in a, in a much different state, most likely much clearer and much more sharp. And the person who's you know, been eating the cheesecake, let's say that's the only state that they knew. They aren't going to understand the other state, that there's a clearer state, that there's a state that feels better. They're not going to understand that, oh, like this habit of eating cheesecake is making me foggy and, you know, it's hurting my stomach. They'll just think that this is kind of just the way life is. This is just what it is. And you know what? I'm fine. But Really, really, it's not. I want to put forth an idea that I really want you to think about. Take your current state right now. And I really guarantee you that there is a way that you could be experiencing this moment in a much more fulfilling way. Not because you have something, not because you've pushed something away, but due to your awareness of this moment due to how you actually interpret this moment due to how you relate to this moment so when we have someone in a low state and their their most normal state is that low state they don't know anything other than that low state they cannot compare and contrast that state with a medium state or a higher state or whatever because all they know is that state so from their point of view it's you know this is what life is and you know it's fine whatever screw it i'm fine i don't know what you're talking about 
And really, um, unless you've experienced a very conscious and clear state, you have no idea how much unnecessary uh, suffering your mind really creates on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. Just conceptualizing and imagining some future or regretting some past thing or being frustrated at something that's happening in the moment. You have no appreciation really for, for what I'm actually saying because you haven't experienced it and seen it for yourself. And really, the present moment is pleasure. If you're fully present and your awareness is in your body, I'm going to make a video about uh, putting awareness in your body in the future. If your awareness is really in your body and it's not just stuck and very contracted in the endless thought stream, the moment is naturally very pleasurable. Um, and it's not pleasurable in this sort of eating cheesecake and masturbating kind of pleasurable, but it's a different kind of pleasure. It's a, a deep okayness. You're deeply okay with what's happening. And even if there's some sort of, let's say, angry or sad sensation inside your body, when you fully let it be there, it naturally feels a lot better because you're not at war with it. So what I mean by suffering... Uh, is not a particular emotion like sadness, because sadness isn't suffering. Suffering is when we interfere with sadness and we reject it and we push at it. That inner battle is the suffering, not the particular sensation that we're feeling. Um, so, basically, you can get your awareness to such a point where just hearing something is pleasure. Just, <clears throat> just feeling a piece of paper in your hands uh, is pleasure. Where just seeing is pleasure. Where just sensing reality is pleasure. Where that's really all you want to do. Sitting down on the chair and feeling the sensations on your ass is pleasure. That's very achievable for a lot of people. It's not very difficult to do something like that. Uh, what would, uh, basically, what a person would need is just a willingness to actually do it and a sense of dedication towards it. But basically, moving on, I went on a little bit of, uh, of a speech. Ultimately, the way to make changes at a fundamental level is by changing your awareness of yourself. What does that mean, to change your awareness of yourself? Basically, it's becoming more self-aware, becoming more aware of different dimensions of yourself. Becoming more aware of how when an emotion arises in your body, how you push and pull at it. How you reject certain things and uh, try and pull other things in, into your life. How you push away sadness or anger and get tense. And how you try and keep pulling more cheesecake uh, <laughs> into your mouth or whatever. More happiness and more, more bliss or whatever. It's about becoming aware of your thoughts, becoming aware of that, uh, you know, becoming aware of the fact that you are not your thoughts, becoming aware of the fact that you're even aware, becoming aware of body sensations, becoming aware of how your beliefs work, and uh, more along those lines. So ultimately, the way to heal isn't by endlessly going to ceremonies or endlessly going to therapy or I don't know some new agey healing or crystals and burning herbs and sage and stuff this isn't going to do anything long term this might make you feel better for a bit but really what has to be done is you have to actually change how you interpret reality how you interpret yourself and how your awareness uh, really operates, you have to change that at a fundamental level. You gotta <laughs> raise your consciousness. The problem that most people have that causes them to hurt so much is the inability to embrace and accept reality. So basically, when we, when we are suffering, What's really happening is there's something in our experience that we are unwilling to embrace and accept. 
So we're sad and we don't want to feel sadness. So we push it away and we repress it and then we go eat cheesecake. <laughs> or there's someone and we think they're ugly and annoying and stupid. So we scream at them. And there's just an inability to accept what is happening now. And acceptance does not mean that we can't change the present moment. It doesn't mean that if someone's going to stab you, that, oh, you just accept it. No, no, no. It, it means that whatever is happening in our experience, we realize this is what should be happening. That there's no other way it can be. And this sort of endless pushing and pulling on reality, this endless hate towards the present moment, this endless just tug of war with reality, that's the delusion. That is the, the, the neuroticism. That is the ego. That is the, the identity structure continuously just defending itself, fighting a pointless war that it can never actually win. So acceptance of the present moment doesn't mean that you can't go clean yourself because you have to sit here for the rest of your life and just accept this. But what it does mean is notice when you're avoiding something in your experience, like a particular emotion, a particular thing, a particular idea that's making you feel any way. And notice just how you manipulate it, push and pull on it and play tug of war with it. And notice how that creates uh, trauma. That creates the unpleasantness. That creates the thing that, you know, you got to go heal for 10 years. Now, in our direct experience, when suffering occurs, what is actually going on? Is there such thing as a broken feeling inside of us that needs fixing or healing? If we investigate, we will find nothing more than sensations that are either being allowed to express themselves and manifest or are being pushed away. And this is a rather profound thing. So there's no such thing as, as healing. There's no fixing or healing an emotion because what is an emotion if 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 we don't philosophize about it if we don't imagine things about it and we reference our direct experience what we're going to find is that an emotion is a particular sensation in the body and we're either allowing it to exist and express itself or we're playing tug of war with it or we're going to battle against it and we're trying to repress it and push it away and that really uh, there's no such thing as an emotion that has to be healed or fixed or changed. If anything, what has to be changed is your constant desire to change and manipulate anything. That's the actual problem, uh, not the particular sensation or emotion that you're feeling. What is the problem is how you're constantly interfering with your... <laughs> I got the hiccups with your natural processes that's that's happening with your natural emotional system with your natural thoughts it's your constant interference with them it's happening all the time right now there's probably tension in your body and you know in five minutes it's going to be back and you're not going to be really accepting of what's happening you'll have judgments and you want to run away and do this and do that and it's very natural for humans to do that it's very normal but it's dysfunctional and this is how a lot of people vast majority of mankind is living their life and the problem is that we're not even aware of it we just think that this is just what life is but it's, it's really not we don't understand that we are ongoingly on a moment-to-moment -moment basis creating this experience of hell of suffering and basically if you're not becoming conscious of that um well, I'd personally rather die than be you because it's going to be a hell of a lot of suffering. It's going to be just a lot of neurosis. And it's easy to take those emotions and blame it outward. Like anger, you know, you get angry at someone. But really, what's happening inside of you? That's your creation. And it's not that feeling angry is bad. What, what is the problem is how you experience it. So you typically... Humans experience their anger from right in here. They get angry, they get very tense in their body, and they get very in their head, and they direct that energy towards something, towards someone or something. But in a state of anger, if you actually let your awareness drop below the neck and into the body and stop being so tense, you'll find it's very alive and fluid, and it actually feels rather good. It's a very intense energy. And you'll notice that it clears out very quickly instead of, you know, you tensing, because 
when you're physically tense, you're holding on to it. You're holding on to it and you're not allowing it to arise and pass. You're just clinging on to some prior state. You're basically in a battle with reality again. And basically, that, that is what actually creates uh, the, the feelings that you have to heal. Okay? Now, like I said, don't misinterpret what I'm saying. Um, what I'm saying is actually very simple. And it's not very philosophical. It's very practical. It's just, it's, it's referencing our direct experience. It's not some philosophy that I made up sitting on my ass. What you do is you become conscious of what you're doing right now. That's it. You become conscious of how you relate to emotions that you don't like. Frustration. What happens when you're frustrated? You get tense. I guarantee you. You dominantly probably just get tense. And you don't allow that frustration to actually just exist. You fight it. If I were to fight you, you would not like that. You know, when you fight your frustration and you tense up, your body doesn't like that. And you feel that in the form of suffering. So from the perspective of our direct experience, there's no such thing as an emotion that has to be changed, fixed, or healed. The only thing that exists is something that we have to allow to live. We, we have to allow our natural emotional expression to exist. We have to stop fighting it. We have to stop being tense. We have to loosen ourselves up. And we have to let our internal energy flow naturally instead of constantly interfering with it and trying to redirect it and suppress it. Because that is what creates uh, trauma for the most part that people go to ceremonies for 10 years for to try and heal. See, when you go to a ceremony for 10 years to try and heal, it doesn't work. Like there's the method, it doesn't work. You're doing something wrong. If you're constantly with the same issue over and over and over again, you're doing something wrong. Okay, like for years and years and years and years, more healing, more healing, more healing, more like you, there's something wrong with the approach. There's something that has to be, something has to be changed. And there's a lot of times where, you know, people say, yeah, yeah, I need healing. Uh, but what they're really doing is they're escaping their sort of present emotional system. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, it has to be healed. I mean, like, like, what do you expect to happen? Do you expect... <laughs> do you expect to have the emotions that you do like versus the emotions that you do, don't like? Do you expect this end of the spectrum to just disappear and then you're left with only things that you like? It's, it's not about feeling good. It's not about endless pleasure uh, forever. It's about letting what's naturally happen, happen, which counterintuitively feels very good because the only... <laughs> The only thing that actually makes you suffer is your constant fighting with what's happening. I made a previous video, I think it was titled, Watch This to Purify Consciousness, and I talked about how sadness is pleasure. And to the mind, that doesn't make sense because we hold sadness and happiness, or just sadness and pleasure, pain and pleasure, we hold these as just total opposites. That there's, no, there's no way in hell that sadness can actually be pleasure because sadness is pain. But, but from the perspective of our direct experience, what the hell is sadness? Sadness is just sensations in the body that either we're allowing them to express themselves or we're just pushing them away and fighting them. And when you fully experience sadness from, from the neck down, your awareness is taken out of thought and it's experienced from the neck down in the body and you're not physically tense and you're very loose about it, naturally, Sadness becomes very pleasurable. Naturally, it's a very rich emotion. It builds compassion, love. It, it really uh, adds a lot of value to you. So in summary, uh, therapy is fine. Counseling is fine. All sorts of methods for becoming aware of yourself are fine. But if you're not actually being aware of yourself, that's that's gonna you're shooting yourself in the foot so the point of 
therapy or counseling or using some kind of, you know, drug, for example, uh, to, to heal yourself, ultimately the point should be to become more self-aware as to how you're creating this uh, particular experience. And not how you can push it away, but how you can actually let it fully express itself. So then it naturally falls away. And then naturally something else arises and then it falls away. And then naturally something else arises and it falls away. Kind of like a wave. It goes, it comes and it crashes and then it comes again and it crashes. And then another thing comes and it crashes. Another thing comes and it crashes. And the point isn't that we're selecting what waves we like and then we're hating, you know, the ones that we don't like. The point is that we want to become a high quality conductor for the waves of reality. We want reality to flow through us in an effortless and smooth way. We want what's naturally happening to happen in an effortless and smooth way. But to do that, to experience it as such requires effort. It requires a lot of practice. It requires a lot of awareness. It requires a lot of consciousness. And this sort of healing community doesn't really have that for the most part. I'm kind of ranting against it at this point. <laughs> Usually it's about fixing something. But there's nothing to fix. The sensation is a sensation. The emotion, it's just a feeling in the body. There's nothing there to fix. There's only something there to just allow it to be there and let it arise naturally and then pass away naturally. And our avoidance mechanism of avoiding things that we don't like and chasing things that we do like, that's a massive habit. That is something that took me quite a while to rewire so that when, let's say I'm angry or let's say I'm sad, I don't fight it. I, I just naturally, I respect my, my fucking body. I respect what is naturally happening. If I'm sad and I wanna cry, I cry. If I'm angry, I, I, I let it happen. I don't tense up and judge the experience. I allow my, my body to be loose about it. I allow anger to flow through me naturally. Because what creates that stress is not anger. It's not frustration. It's the fact that you're pushing it away. Apparently 90% of diseases are stress related. Apparently at least that's a random, pretty random off topic, but uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. And it makes a lot of sense to me at least. So when I feel, let's say angry or frustrated, um, I don't blame it on other people. I, I take responsibility for what the hell I'm creating, what's happening, and I allow it to happen without judgment. If I'm angry, uh, like, don't be tense about it. It's, it's a very alive feeling. It's very, it's very rich, okay? It's not a rigid anger, which is how humans usually experience anger. It's, it's usually just very tense, very contracted, and you want to defend yourself or blame what's happening on someone. And it's a very neurotic state, whereas anger, when experienced fully without resistance, is once again a very beautiful state, actually. There's a quote from a Zen master. I got it from Shin Zen Young. Uh, it's, I'm not going to quote it perfectly, but it's something like this. If I am angry, I am healthy. And it's by a Zen master, which, <laughs> yeah, for as long as I can get angry, I am in good health. And see, like, we hear something like that, and that makes no sense to us, because it's like, what? Like, anger is the exact opposite of good health. You know, anger is like stress, and it, you know, it does all this harmful stuff to the body. Uh, but it's, <laughs> it has nothing to do with anger. It has everything to do with how you relate to anger, how you experience anger. So the Zen master doesn't experience anger with resistance. He experiences it fully and he fully embraces it and he actually respects what is happening. There's an actual level of respect for what is happening inside of you and you actually allow it to exist. You give it the permission to exist. You give all the individual parts of yourself to, uh, you, you give it permission to exist. So the part of you that wants to eat cheesecake, you let that part live. The part of you that wants to eat healthy, you let that part live. You don't hate it, you don't push it away, you don't pull at it, you let it exist. The part of you that gets angry, 
you let that exist. The part of you that gets sad, you let that exist. The part of you that gets happy and joyful, you let that exist. The part of you that um, wants to go for a walk, you let that exist. The part of you that wants to sit down, you let that exist. Whatever is happening in the moment, you let, you let it exist. That's it. You don't push and pull on it. You don't judge it. You don't get mad. You drop your awareness into your body. That's a crucial distinction between resting awareness in your head and bring it into your body. You loosen up your tension and you just, you allow what's happening to happen. And as you uh, sort of rewire your habits, naturally life becomes a lot more pleasurable. Just hearing something becomes pleasure, like actual physical pleasure, not, not like philosophical airy fairy. Like actually when you hear a noise, it's like, that feels good. How is it? Like it's, it's, strange almost it's like i'm feeling a cup but like a cup the feeling of a cup is pleasure or i'm seeing but it's like, like seeing is pleasure like how is this possible <laughs> in a sense and it's because you embrace it so fully and without resistance that naturally what's happening just becomes pleasure um so yeah the zen master quote is rather counterintuitive and that's because from the perspective of direct experience, not how we think about emotions, but how we actually, how they are in our actual experience, um, there's nothing wrong with any single one. That's why in Zen they say there are no good or bad emotions. Because, well, there's no good or bad emotions. That judgment is very artificial and it's very selfish, actually. It's, it's just, you want what what you believe is the best and it's very just me centered it's very selfish whereas um when you realize that no good or no no emotion is good or bad and you actually live from from that awareness there's just a massive amount of respect for whatever is happening in in your body for the needs of uh, of your body for the needs of your being you don't want to fight it anymore you want to push and pull on what's happening inside of you there's just an actual respect for what's happening in any situation naturally the most um the most <laughs> sort of common thing for you to do would be to just experience what's happening without wanting to fight it you know after training for so long after you know a zen master you can do that effortlessly um but you know this isn't something you can do in five minutes, like I said, you actually gotta work towards it because your habits right now are so, it's so deeply ingrained into you that when you feel discomfort, you push it away. It's so, it's such a robotic uh, response. It's so animalistic and there's no real awareness around it. I, uh, I used to do this form of meditation that I basically just invented and it, if you go on the internet, there's all sorts of like self-love meditations, self-love meditations. It's always like this really airy fairy sort of vibe to it. But what I did was it was called self-hatred meditation where I purposely hate myself just to see what it's like and to not resist it. Just so I can get a very deep sense of discomfort and not resistant, resist it. And counterintuitively, I can feel even more pleasure because of that. Because the way I relate to both sides of the spectrum now has radically changed. Um, so you don't have to do something like that. I only did it like three times because in a sense, it, it actually is very extreme. It's, 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 it's actually a lot. It's, it's a lot to handle emotionally. Um, but it was very potent. It worked. It was very effective. Uh, but naturally, you can do this in you know, your, your normal life. It's just whenever you feel yourself suffering, you got to be very honest with yourself that, okay, I'm just, I'm uncomfortable and I am trying to push this feeling away. You just sit down and you let it arise fully. You let go of your tension. You let go of your judgment. You let go of your self agenda and you let it happen naturally through you. And you slowly rewire your nervous system to experience and feel emotions in a very different way. One that isn't just about survival and clinging but one that is about freedom and a deeper sense of authenticity self-expression and love 
And right now, the majority of mankind is wired for basically just survival and pushing and pulling and tug of war. And, you know, I'm not judging anyone, but the problem is that we're not even conscious of it. We just think that this is how life is, but it's not. It's not at all. So my next point, it's number six on the trap of healing. The pushing away resistance quality is what causes suffering and most forms of psychological disease. In other words, the inability to allow reality to naturally express itself is what causes us to experience a lack of satisfaction in life. Because if you actually let reality um, express itself naturally through you, there's not going to be suffering any, anymore. But it's hard to imagine this. And immediately the mind can pull out some very drastic examples like if someone tries to murder me, what? You want me to just enjoy it? And that, if your mind does something like that, it pulls out this really radical example. You should be very skeptical of that because this is clearly it just trying to defend some kind of current view that it has. It's not trying to make any fundamental changes to itself because once again, it's just in the act of surviving. It's in the process or it's in the habit of just clinging and wanting to just maintain its you know, current state. It's not in the business of experiencing reality in a truthful way, in a loving way or an accurate way. It's just in the business of um, maintaining itself, which is good up until a certain point. It becomes dysfunctional. And um, really, if you allow reality to naturally express itself through you, the quality of basically every area of your life will increase. Your relationships will be more authentic, your job, your a career, your creativity, your moment-to-moment -moment sense of clarity will radically increase as well. You'll be more charismatic, you'll be more in touch with your body and reality. Whereas right now, most humans, their attention is so contracted behind the eyes and like in the middle of the head into their thoughts that there's a deep disconnection from their body and from the moment, which is uh, really a problem. It creates a lot of suffering. Um, so I hope you guys understand uh, everything I've said rather clearly up until this point. If you don't, leave a comment and I'll help to clarify. Moving on, uh, this part is let sensations arise and pass on their own. So this is basically how healing ultimately works. Um, healing doesn't have anything to do with healing an emotion away or trying to fix an emotion. It has everything to do with just becoming conscious of it and actually respecting it, having just respect for whatever's happening inside of you, the thoughts that are happening, or the feelings that are happening, or your particular trauma, whatever. It's about actually just respecting that part of you, not trying to hate it and push it away. You know, you want self-love, but you're trying to heal, heal your emotions away. <laughs> um, you know, really, whatever's happening inside of you, just have respect for it. Let it be there. Don't be tense about it. Don't judge it. Don't, don't believe your thoughts about it. Don't get sucked into the mental energy and the mental loop. Just let, just allow yourself to feel it. Lie down on your bed or on the floor or whatever. Sit down and allow your body to be comfortable and not tense and let it fully, fully move through you. And you'll notice it's very alive naturally. And you're going to notice that you're very tense and that you actually block the feeling of being alive from, you know, manifesting inside of you, which is why humans feel very, um, they feel very dull. You know, humans, like, there's just a dullness within a lot of humans because that's naturally what happens when our whole, um, you know, our, our attention and our awareness is just contracted into, into thought. We're just disconnected from everything. So there's just a dullness that naturally arises in a state of just disconnection and separateness and isolation and suffering. Um, so I'm not judging anyone or even anything, um, but these habits are dysfunctional. You know, there's no, no way I can really get around saying that, you know, like they're, they're dysfunctional habits and, um, they just, you just got to be conscious of them. You got to be aware of them and you have to naturally just allow yourself to rewire to a more, uh, functional way to live. 
And that can be rather difficult because your current state of really pushing and pulling on what's happening is so, so, it has way more power than you can currently imagine right now. And rewiring yourself to experience unpleasant, so-called unpleasant emotions uh, in a very alive and fluid way, that is going to take some work. And I'd recommend getting started right now. It's very practical. It's not philosophical. Whenever uh, you're in, you know, whenever the immediate experience has a sense of, you know, deep separateness, isolation, anger, frustration, any sense of just unpleasantness, just allow yourself to respect it and sit down and open yourself up to it and do it over and over and over again. You're trying to wire in a habit. It's like you're building a muscle, you know, you lift and then, you know, you put it down, you lift up and down, up and down. You're really training it. And really, this is where emotional mastery comes from. Emotional mastery does not come from pushing emotions away and looking all stoic like this. Um, it comes from a deep experiencing of what is actually happening in reality, a deep experiencing of the present moment and whatever the hell is happening, happening in it, allowing yourself to be very open to it. And it feels very good. It feels very good. It's pleasure. It's just, it's so much pleasure. You can't even begin to understand how much pleasure it actually is until you've actually really experienced some of these states. That's why people, it, it's, it's, it's funny when people haven't done this work, but they're like, you know, I'm okay anyway. You know, I'm, you know, like I'm, I'm fine. It's like, you know, you might not want to kill yourself, but uh, odds are, odds are you're just not conscious of the suffering that you're creating because our minds are creating a hell of a lot of it in order to just stay alive. It takes so much energy to just really perpetuate this sense of survival, this, this sort of habit that we have. It takes a lot of energy to just push away certain emotions and pull other ones towards us and push away certain thoughts and pull other ones to, towards us. It takes way too much energy. Whereas if you just surrender and let it naturally happen, now it's a lot more effortless, but that, that takes practice. There's sort of, there's depths to surrendering and uh, acceptance and allowing these kinds of things. It's not just like either you're doing it or you're not, there's degrees of it. And um, you gotta get better at it. So let, uh, let sensations arise and pass on their own. Let's get started with this one. We must let whatever is arising in the present moment to fully arise and express itself in an alive and fluid way. So what does it mean for it to be alive and fluid? I'm going to be explaining more of this towards the end of the video. But typically how humans experience emotions is very dull, very fixed, very rigid. So it's stuck somewhere in their body and that is what creates this sort of traumatic or just, yeah, these like emotional wounds, really. It's just this stuckness in the emotion because it can't express itself. You're tense. You're holding it in place. You have to ease up your muscles <laughs> and let it move and bring awareness into your body. So humans typically do not experience their emotions in this way. We typically suppress and push them away on major and minor levels. This makes us feel lifeless and without energy. Because what's happening is naturally you're very alive. Naturally your body has a lot of energy, but you're fighting it and you're pushing it away because uh, really you're scared of it on some kind of level. You're scared to experience sadness fully. You're scared to experience life fully because it's very vulnerable because you're not protecting yourself anymore when you're experiencing life fully. You don't give a shit about that kind of stuff. You just are very immersed in the experience. You're not worrying in your, in your head anymore. And you're breaking this habit of constantly projecting some kind of future scenario where your life is a disaster or constantly regretting something or whatever. You're really deconstructing these habits of basically endless suffering and you're moving into uh, a deep appreciation and respect for life and a deep sense of curiosity and wonder and just appreciation of it. We use a lot of our energy interfering with our natural emotions and natural flow. 
We deny and repress aspects of our thoughts and feelings that we judge uh, as bad, weak, negative, etc. This repression never actually works. So I have a bit of a typo here. Judge, judge as bad. I might, I got to try and remember to fix that one. If not, it's fine. Um, so I'm going to have a video soon about shadow work. Basically, one of my next two will be all about how we repress aspects of ourselves, how we judge them, stuff like that, and how to become aware of them. I'm going to give an actual method for becoming aware of these things inside of ourselves. And this repression never works because, well, if it worked, we wouldn't be having this conversation. If, if you could actually just push a bad emotion away, a quote-unquote bad emotion, and then just pull a good emotion towards you, well, then we would just live all of our lives in just endless, endless bliss, you know? But uh, life doesn't work that way, and, well, we, you got to respect it, and you actually have to see the perfection of that. You have to see that there's no good or bad emotion. There's no, like, there's nothing wrong with any of them. It's just about how you're experiencing it. Anger and sadness and frustration, for example, are not suffering. How you relate to those emotions is what creates suffering. Your awareness of those emotions um, or your lack of awareness is what creates suffering. Whatever is occurring in the present moment is what we need to allow to happen. Let reality manifest on its own terms and not yours. I'll start talking about that real quick. Let reality manifest on its own terms. Put down your self agenda. Put down what you have to be doing right now and this and that. Five minutes, just let reality manifest on its own, on its own terms. Let it arise naturally. Let your thoughts arise naturally without trying to push and pull on them, without being very identified with them. Just be aware of them. Let them come and go naturally. Notice how your thoughts appear so important to you. There's a sense of importance that you place on them, which creates a lot of suffering. It creates a lot of just wasted energy. Feel the emotions in your body and just realize uh, how you play tug of war with them, how you go to war against them. So let them manifest on their own terms and not yours. Let, let your being, let your mind, and let your emotional system exist on their own terms and not on the ones that you're clinging to. Let it exist on its own terms and um, really drop your agenda in a sense. By doing this, you drop the habit of constantly fighting against what is naturally happening, which liberates you from creating further damage to yourself and continuously suffering, really. So that basically sums that up. This is basically how healing works. It's about changing your awareness of yourself. It's not about healing an emotion away or these negative energies coming to get me or something like that. These negative emotions. No, man. Like How you're judging the emotion is the problem that should be healed, if anything. That's the thing that has to get fixed. Not the particular experience, not the particular emotion, but how you're relating to it, that is what is total garbage. Really, if you've had some sort of traumatic experience in your life um, and you know, you're trying to heal from it, you have to have respect for that experience. It's never, if you can't accept what's happening inside of you, accept that you, know, you remembering that experience is a thought and there's an emotional byproduct due to the remembering of that experience. And even as you remember the experience, you attach all sorts of new meanings onto it, which distorts the original experience. Um, you, know, you have to have respect for what's happening inside of you. You have to, you just have to respect it. There's no other way. You have to stop fighting it. Just stop, just stop fighting it. Just give up. Just don't do that anymore. It'll take practice, but you're not going to win the battle. You're going to die suffering because it's, it's, a, it's a state of neurosis. It's just delusion. It's just this delusional habit, this delusional state, and it wants to defend itself. It's, it's like you might be aware of what I'm saying. You might understand it, but even in experience, it perpetuates itself so well. 
and it's so sneaky and it creates all these reasonings for why why I should be this way or that way and it pulls you out of the the moment it pulls you out of life it continuously does this 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 ego this identity this uh, resistance pattern it's phenomenal at this it knows exactly what to think to push your buttons it knows you better than you know you it knows exactly what to what to say in your head to to ignore everything that I'm saying or what you have to be doing it knows exactly what to say to manipulate you to manipulate your attention it knows exactly <laughs> what to do to distract you it knows exactly what to do to make you not rewire yourself and maintain these habits and it's not evil it's just trying to survive and you have to respect that that's just one more thing happening inside of you that you have to respect and accept and actually be grateful for because it's a phenomenal thing it's it's kept you alive that's the mechanism that has kept you alive it's just that at a certain point in a person's development that mechanism becomes dysfunctional that mechanism sort of <laughs> begins to eat itself alive in a sense it begins to attack itself and that is what creates suffering that's what creates resistance now I'm gonna tell you how to tell if you are acting out of repressed emotions how does the emotion feel is it alive do you take responsibility for them so I'm gonna talk about is it alive is it stale is it stuck in a per, uh, in a sp particular place in your body or is it flowing and moving around you is your gut sucked in like where do you feel it let's say you feel it in your stomach is your are your abs tense or are they loose and open if it's in your legs are your legs tense or are they loose and open if it's in your jaw are you clenching your jaw I don't know some that's a rather common one the jaw tension I can't really relate to that I don't know how to like clench my jaw <laughs> is it in your forehead you know are you like this and then you you know hold it there you know locate it and loosen up your entire body you got to bring awareness into the body you have to notice the distinction between resting your awareness in the neck up in your head space and the neck down you have to notice the actual energetic shift of having and practice it place a lot of awareness in your head and then place a lot of awareness in your body and go back and forth and notice the difference between the two and when you're placing awareness in your body loosen up your muscles loosen up your tension open open up your body don't contract you're not a what, what's the word Con contortionist or something you know those people who twist in all sorts of ways don't do that remain rather symmetrical remain open remain non-judgmental remain conscious remain clear remain not tense and go back and forth between resting awareness in the head and you're immediately identified with the mental stream and it sucks and placing awareness in your body it's naturally way more pleasurable in your body because you're loose you're letting the life that's inside of you move around freely it's alive that's what you want to feel do you want to feel alive do you take responsibility for your emotions or do you blame other people for them rather simple uh, you know are your emotions fluid and moving around in you or, or or are they stuck and unable to flow we just talked about this are you tense as they arise do you judge your emotions and do you push and pull on them do you always try and move them around like are you trying to suppress them and push them away basically to sum up all of that are you tense where is your awareness is it in your body or is it stuck in your head where is your awareness in your body your body's not tense you're not judging the emotions you have respect for them there's just a natural sense of uh, acceptance of them and you're not blaming this particular state that you have on this person who's an idiot or that person no 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 this is something that's happening inside of you you gotta take responsibility for it it's something you're creating and whatever the emotion is there's no good or bad emotion the only sort of problem or thing that needs to be healed is the part of you 
that is constantly resisting what's happening, that, that right there is the actual problem. But if we examine what that is from the perspective of our, of our direct experience, the part of me that resists what happens is just my own bodily energy. It's my own aliveness. We have aliveness, the alive flow inside of us. You know, you can feel it. You know, it's not a concept. You just feel into your body. And then we have the alive flow right here. And we have it flowing. And then we have another part of it, like pushing and attacking it. And we have it flowing. And then it's just, it's just destroying itself. Basically, your tension and your resistance is your own aliveness destroying itself. It's your own system attacking itself. It's like if I walk down the street and I just did this as I was walking down the street, just, just doing this all day, all day, all day. And I see no problem with it. What are you talking about, dude? Like, this is just how life is. Because after doing this for 40 years, you have no idea how much better life can be. This is all you know. This is your whole life right here is just this. It's literally just, <laughs> you're just walking around all day, all day, just doing this. So, I mean, obviously, obviously you have, you like, how are you supposed to know that you're doing this unless I point it out to you? And then when you stop doing that, you're like, holy crap, like, that took a lot of energy to just hold my arm there all day for 40 years doing this, punching myself in the head. My head feels a lot better. Wow. My arm feels better. Everything's way more at ease. And then you don't do that for a long time. And it's like, wow, I have a lot of energy that is just freed up out of nowhere. There's a greater sense of clarity. There's more compassion. My sense of self is more inclusive to include more inclusive to include my sense of self is more you know at one with everything it's more relaxed and at ease with everything it's, i see myself in reality i see myself in my environment in my friends and my family i see myself in people across the world i i actually have a deeper sense of connection to the world now that's basically it for this video if you guys have any any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll answer. Um, I'll help you out. And that's it. If you guys enjoyed, please make sure to like and subscribe. It helps my channel to grow. And I obviously greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much for sticking around until this point. It means a lot to me. Um, I really love making videos. And let me know if you got value out of it. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And peace out.